Hi guys, the Metal Maniac back again, and in this video, I'm going to be listing off my top five favorite Stephen King movies. Um, so before I begin, um, I do have one honorable mention, and that's uh, the movie Christine. A uh, really good movie, uh, just didn't make my top five. All right. So, my number five is uh, 1408, an extremely underrated movie uh, uh, starring John Cusack and uh, Samuel Jackson. Uh, it's sort of more of a psychological horror movie uh, than, you know, straight up sort of your standard horror. Um, it, it's really, really cool because um, it, it takes place basically in like one, oh, sorry, one room an apartment in like a, not an apartment, a hotel room. Um, and it's just really, really cool. A lot of twists and turns you don't really expect, uh, which is good because there's a lot of movies that try to, you know, uh, uh, play with your expectations, but don't, it doesn't really work out and you can guess what, what's going to happen. But this movie is one of the few, uh, especially one of the few psychological horror movies that, you know, you never know what's coming next. Um, and I really love just, the story overall about this guy who is like a paranormal investigator but you know doesn't really believe in the paranormal and sort of like just you know does it because you know it makes money um and you know and then he goes to this you know he, he gets this you know uh um uh idea that like you know there's nothing no paranormal but then he goes to this hotel that supposedly there's a room that's actually haunted. And, you know, he's met by Samuel Jackson, who's, uh, I guess, the, the hotel owner. Um, and, you know, he tells him, you know, about the room. He kind of warns him, don't go in there, you know. People, anyone who goes in there, you know, doesn't really come out. Um, so, he, you know, he doesn't, of course he doesn't believe him. So he goes in, and that's when everything starts just going haywire. Um, you know, he's haunted by both the, you know, the, the past of what's happened there, as well as, as well as he's haunted by his own past, you know, and he has to confront with that as well. Um, just a very good movie, very underrated movie, and yeah, it's at my number five spot. Alright, my number four spot. Kind of cheating on this one, I'm putting two different ones in here, although they're technically part of the same story. Um, and that is the remake of uh, It Chapters 1 and 2. Now, I am not a fan of the original, you know, 1990 miniseries. I think the, uh, I think it's way too campy, way too goofy. You can't really take it seriously, especially with, you know, Tim Curry as Pennywise. Like, you know, it just doesn't work because, you know, uh, uh, yeah, sure, you have some, you know, quote-unquote, uh, scary moments with with you know Pennywise in that movie uh, in that movie, but you know it also coincides with some of the stupidest, ridiculous, and kind of silly scenes as well. So you can't really take that version of Pennywise seriously. But the uh, it chapters one and two, the remakes that just came out, you know what a year or so ago, are absolutely amazing. Way better ad adaptation than the '90s one. And, you know, Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise is absolutely menacing and terrifying. And, you know, the transformation scenes, you know, when he, you know, turns into the character's worst fears, uh, also really terrifying. And I love the entire cast. You know, even the kid actors are really amazing. Um, especially the guy, I can't remember his name, but he also played one of the characters in uh, Stranger Things. Uh, super funny. Um, but yeah, absolutely amazing. It Chapters 1 and 2, the remake versions, are just absolutely amazing, and I love them. Alright, number three. Number three is the original Pet Cemetery. Um, yeah, it's just really good. Also, uh, another great child actor, the uh, kid who plays, uh, I think his name is Gabe. I know, I always forget his name, but uh, I think it's Gabe. Um, yeah, really great, actually kind of terrifying, like, whenever there's a child actor in a horror movie that, you know, they want to make it, want to make the kids scary, uh, it, it doesn't really work, you know, you know, small, small kid, you know, doesn't really understand what acting is, for the most part, but then again, sometimes you get these, uh, 
kid actors that actually do a good job, you know. Um, and, you know, the kid in this movie does a really great job. Um, I think he's also the kid... I think he also uh, played a, a kid later on in another horror film. Um, uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. I believe it's the same kid, just a little older. Uh, I might be wrong, but he, I think that's the same kid. Um... But yeah, and then of course, you know, the story of the pet cemetery itself, you know, how if you bury something there, you know, uh, not in the cemetery itself, but like a little onwards where that weird sort of Indian burial ground type thing is. If you bury someone or something there, they come back. Um, I also like the aspect of, yeah, sure, that can happen, but whatever, you know, whatever's buried there and comes back, uh, it's a completely different spirit. It's almost like an evil demon of sorts that, like, possesses the, the, the bodies and then, like, just, you know, wreaks havoc. Um, and I like how, like, sometimes, you know, it's, uh, the evil is portrayed as, you know, kind of jokey, but also kind of, you know, well, well, well it's, it's weird, because I, I like that it's weird, but, like, you get different, almost, you can even tell it's different evil spirits each time. Like, when they had the flashback between when the, uh, when, you know, when the guy, when the first guy got, in the, got uh, buried there, then reanimated, he wasn't sort of, like, killing anyone. He was just sort of an evil jackass, you know? He was just, like, telling people's, you know, uh, worst secrets and stuff like that, just ruining people's, you know, sort of, like, relationships. Um, and then the cat, you know, the cat is sort of just, you know, a little, a little worse, you know, just sort of like scratches people and stuff like that. And it's kind of a more, you know, a jackass as well. It's just like so, something you don't want to mess with because he just like tries to, you know, claw you and stuff. But then the worst one is Gabe when he comes back. He is literally, a, he's pretty much a serial killer. Um, so I think I like the idea of like each time something comes back, it's a, completely different spirit. You know, again, it could range from just an absolute asshole to, like, an absolute killer. Um, I love that. Um, but yeah, everyone does a great job in this movie. Uh, the soundtrack is really good. And, uh, overall, very, very good movie. Alright, number two. Number two is Salem's Lot. I absolutely love this movie. Um, one of the best vampire movies, um, I also, it, it sort of has, I know it has some sort of traditional plot of, you know, vampire hunter versus vampire, but it does, it, it does that very, that trope very, very well. All the characters are extremely memorable, you know, especially, uh, uh, Mr. Barlow, even though he doesn't have that much screen time, I think he only has around, like, what, five minutes of screen time throughout the entire movie, but when he does appear on screen, it's always extremely menacing and just a very chilling character. Um, yeah, and of, of course I love the uh, uh, reference to Nasratu with the uh, design of the vampire in this one. Um, but yeah, very, very good. Alright, number one. Number one is, I think, the most underrated Stephen King movie, and that's Graveyard Shift. Um, yeah, everything is great about this movie, from the acting, to the set design, to the monster design, even the absolutely killer soundtrack, which I need to get, by the way, I really want to get the soundtrack to this movie, because it's absolutely amazing. Um, this movie is about, uh, this, uh, uh small town, and this, like, uh, uh, sort of, like, uh, cotton factory, you know, with the cotton presses and stuff. Um, and so it's sort of, like, uh, almost abandoned, like, it, it doesn't have that many staff, because everyone from, like, uh, uh, early, like, late night to early morning, anyone in that sort of, uh, you know, quote-unquote graveyard shift, uh, just disappears, you know, so they have to keep hiring people, but, you know, the business is failing, um, and it's run by this really, like, weird guy, um, what's his name again, uh, for some reason, I always forget his name. Warwick. Warwick. He, he's the, he's uh, this guy right here. He's sort of like a weird, very weird character. Uh, and I love how, like, with the character... He's pretty much, I guess, uh, other than the monster, pretty much the main antagonist. But also not antagonist, because uh, uh, his character is just so cool in the fact that he's so unpredictable. So unpredictable. Like, one minute he can be, like, uh, sort of like a... Just like a... a you know, just like one of the one of the other team, you know, one of the other you know workers, 
uh, you know, like chatting and stuff like that, and then the next minute he can go totally nuts and just like start beating beating someone up. Like he's very unpredictable, but I like the writing because unpredictability works with this character. Um, also, you have the main character, sort of this drifter guy that you know is going from town to town, sort of like you know looking for work, and he ends up at the you know the uh, cotton factory uh, along with a couple of other guys as well. Um, he, he does a great job, uh, for, I forget, uh, what the actor's name is, but, uh, does a great job, as well as, you know, I'm probably my favorite character in the entire movie, this absolutely nut job exterminator, uh, uh, I don't think he even, uh, I don't think they even drop his name in the movie, uh, I just, so I just call him the exterminator guy, uh, he's played by Brad Dourif, who, of course, every role he, he's in is amazing, uh, he's sort of this, like, uh, uh very... Uh, um, uh, psycho exterminator, like, he, he, like, in some scenes, like, uh, he's just sort of, like, running after the rats. Oh, that, I almost forgot to mention the rats are, uh, the reason why, uh, uh, no, a lot of people don't want to work there, you know, among with the disappearances, but the rats have a big plate apart in this, and, like, because, like, he, he's, he's, like, constantly trying, you know, kill the rats, and, like, even sort of, like, uh, I guess mocking them, like, he, he sprays a, a rat with, like, uh, I guess, like, whatever poison, uh, slow, slow poison, or, I don't know, I don't know if even it's, if it's poison, but he sprays the rat with, uh, one rat with something, and he doesn't even kill it, he's just like, uh, 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 spread the word to your friends that I'm here, you know, uh, just a very cool and just a wacky character, um, and then the set design is really good. Actually, the, pl the, the scenes that take place in the mill itself is in an actual cotton mill. Uh, and then, like, there's these underground tunnels and stuff and these, like, catacombs, you know, that are sort of, like, filling up with dead bodies that are, like, uh, sort of shifting from the ground from the, from the cemetery that's, you know, right next to the cotton mill. Um, it's just a really good movie, and the monster design is really cool, too. It's like this gigantic mutant, this, like, rat, half rat, half bat gigantic thing. Uh, mon the monster design is also extremely believable. It looks, and even the close-up, it looks, it looks real. Like, it looks so good. Um, yeah, a very, it's my favorite Stephen King movie. A very underrated, sort of, like, uh, uh just fun-to-watch monster movie. Um, but yeah, Graveyard Shift is at number one. Alright, so that's about it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.